Let's get started with your number one pick because just like a whole bunch of people, you have Sam Darnold going to Cleveland at number one. Why is that? I'll tell you what, he's got the ability to be a top pick in any draft, a top five pick in every draft, too. First of all, arm strength. The guy's got enough arm to make all the throws, and he does make all the throws. He's got vision. He can read the defenses, but he can also make plays outside the pocket, make him dangerous two ways for you. Only issues to me this year, sometimes I thought he forced the ball a little bit, and we know he's had some fumble issues, but I think they are all correctable. Easy pick for me for the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, let's hope those turnovers can be remedied. How about at number two? You have the chef, Saquon Barkley, going to Big Blue and the Giants. Why, Charlie? Well, I'll tell you what, again, this guy's a top five pick in any draft. Well, Daniel Thomason, Hall of Famer, I think this guy is better coming out at the same point in time. He's got the speed to get outside. He's got the ability to run inside with in instincts, vision, and acceleration. And he's got the hands of a wide receiver coming out of the backfield. Another no-brainer. Giants, hey, they're in a win right now, Mo. We'll get the quarterback later. That's high praise comparing him to LT. Now we move along to number three. It's the cerebral Josh Rosen to the Jets, Charlie. I don't know how many times people have said, this guy's the most pro-ready. That's pretty good compliment, isn't it? You watch the guy throw from the pocket. He's a natural pocket passer. He's very good reading the defense. He's got a nice touch deep. He's very accurate with the football. Now, sometimes he may force it, and his ability to get outside the pocket and be a runner, he's not there. But I do think he can slide and avoid people. Biggest questions come in the area of the health, durability, leadership, and how's he going to handle the big stage off the field? Mm, health and durability, always question marks. So, DJ, now I turn to you. When it comes to concerns as they pertain to Josh Rosen, what are they for you? Uh, for me, it's just really when you watch him on the field, the lack of escapability, creativity, however you want to phrase that, and playmaking off schedule, that's one. And then the durability, uh, that to me is a big issue. You can't help your club if you're not on the field, and he's had some issues with injuries the last couple years. Concerns when it comes to Josh Rosen, Bucky? I think we just spend this forward I think the concern will be the coaching staff who is he pat matched up with when he goes to the next level how does that coach challenge him how does that coach really teach him the nuances of playing the position because he's going to challenge him he's going to ask the why that coach can have insecurities when it comes to explaining his offense and the purpose of why they call him play Charlie you heard what they had to say any of that concern you yeah I, I think uh, all of the above to a degree uh, do real Billy are you going to have the guy out there? Can he take a hit? Can he stay in the pocket? And if he's not going to be a guy who's going to make plays outside the pocket, how many hits can he take in there and come back and play every week for you? That's number one. Number two, leadership ability, work habits. What is his level in those areas? Those are questions you want to get answered. And finally, how's this guy going to handle, we'll call it the social issues, of being a top pick in a major city and handling everything that comes with that off the field? He's very smart. Hey, this might just be a simple maturity thing for him. Growing up and, hey, taking it. Because no question, this guy can throw the football. Yeah, just to echo what Charlie said, just throwing the football yeah. on schedule, he's the best in the draft. And for me, if he doesn't have the durability concerns specifically, you make a strong case he's the best quarterback in this draft. Yeah, I think he is the best quarterback in this draft. I think he's polished, he's pro ready. I think some of the things that have been discussed about him have been overblown. I believe at the end of the day, this guy's going to be a star the position. The maturation process of Josh Rosen, it's ever evolving. So we'll see how things shake out as we inch closer to draft day. Now let's get back to business, Chuck. Uh, your mock, you have uh, Bradley Chubb. Going number four to Cleveland. What say you? Well, sorry, first of all, now you got a bookend of Miles Garrett. You got two rushers there, which uh, it makes your pass defense a lot better, makes your whole defense better. But explosion off the football. The running game, he can set the edge, he can stack at the point of attack, he has got good hand use. As a pass rusher, I like his quickness, I like his hands, I like his explosion, I like his athletic ability. He's got a natural inside move, which you see right there. All right, Lot, lots of potential coming right there out of Bradley Chubb. The Browns, they would love to covet his services. But uh, time for our graphics crew to get to work because we have a trade alert. You see it right there. Broncos potentially getting picks 12 and number 22. And then the Bills, well, they would receive the fifth overall selection. So many questions to be answered. So who is Buffalo taking, according to Charlie? Listen up. Show you the off straight. That big arm, we talked about it. Allen throwing it on target. Has a man wide open. Touchdown! Allen throwing to the end zone. Caught touchdown! Well, Charlie, it's been a meteoric rise for the Wyoming Cowboys. So why Josh Allen to the Buffalo Bills at five? 
Well, obviously they need a quarterback. I like this guy's ability to make big time throws. This guy, to me, has the best ability to make the wild throws, and you see them. Strong arm, got touch, can get it deep. Now, issues. As far as the accuracy, he's not consistent all the time, and sometimes his decision-making and his instincts in the pocket aren't as good. In my report, I said he can make plays on the run, and he's always on the run. The pass protection is terrible for him there. So it's a little bit of a boom or bust, but I'm going with the boom here. No problem with the wind in Buffalo. He'll cut right through the wind with that fireball he's got. Yeah, you can't teach size, and we do know that he is a big man. So now let's recap picks one through eight. You see Saquon Barkley, he has him going number two. Charlie does to the Giants. Set school records, 39 rushing touchdowns. Josh Allen, just heard about him, checking in at number five with the Bills. And Quentin Nelson, number six to Indy, started all 13 games at left guard last year, and he was a team captain. Let's keep the fun times rolling here. Let's welcome in our guy, Lance Zerline, to join in on the conversation. Now, when it comes to the Colts, Charlie, I'm going to start with you. How does Andrew Luck's health impact the upcoming draft? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, we already know what it did. They traded back. If they had an issue about his health, they stay at three and take a quarterback. They don't feel there is an issue. They're going back to six. Now, I think they want to focus on three elite players. You got Saquon Barkley, Bradley Chubb, okay, and then Quentin Nelson. In my mock draft, Nelson's there. The others aren't. You take Nelson. They got to solidify that offensive line. The biggest problem for them is keeping luck upright. Offensive line's been terrible. This gets it on the right track. Lance Zerline, you're an NFL.com draft analyst for a reason. So how does Andrew Luck's health affect the draft coming up? Well, I don't think it affects necessarily what the Colts are going to do in this year's draft. I think, you know, from a strategic standpoint, I think they're going to stay the course of what they plan on doing. But one of the things that they plan on doing is really fortifying the guard position from a pass protection standpoint. And when you look at Quentin Nelson, I think he is a dominant dominant run blocker, but I think he's kind of an average pass protector. So I think Chris Ballard, who we see there, the general manager of the Colts, I think he's got to be comfortable with the pass protection of Quentin Nelson for him to lock in on this because when you look up and down the Colts roster, they have a ton of holes, and I do think best player available is, is probably what they're doing. All right, how about Marcus Davenport? You see what that young man brings to the table, Charlie, to the 49ers. Why is that? They need a pass rusher, and to me, this is the second best pass rusher in the draft. What I like about Davenport is this, is the quickness and explosion off the line of scrimmage. Now, I think he's got natural pass rush skills, meaning he's got the hand quickness and the change of direction ability to beat the tackle. I think he can set the edge versus the run in, in the college tape that I watched, and he can make athletic plays against the run, along with his pursuit being able to go sideline to sideline. Negatives, I think this guy is only a sideline backer as far as a pass rusher. I think if the size enters in there, I like him standing on his feet as a pass rusher. All right, Charlie, let's recap. 9 through 16, you have Marcus Davenport, Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year, making noise with San Francisco. Roquan Smith, SEC Defensive Player of the Year. And Vita Vea, he was the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. So a lot of players of the year at their respective positions, and that's always a good thing, as most people say. Now, we jump ahead to number 17. Charlie, you have Derwin James going to the Bolts. Why is that, man? Hey, I tell you, I love this guy. First of all, this guy's a terrific athlete. He's got great speed in the 4-4s and the 40-yard dash. Full position flexibility. I've seen this guy line up at free safety, strong safety, nickel linebacker, and the nickel cornerback position. In fact, as a nickel corner, I've seen him run deep with a wide receiver. In off coverage, he can play man-to-man. -man. Not a lot of safeties can do that. And I also could see him going back at free safety and being the center fielder. Love his position flexibility. This guy's a steal where he is right now. Probably like him to clean up the tackling a little bit. All right, let's jump ahead to 17 through 24, where there's strong representation out of the Southeastern Conference. Deron Payne from Alabama to Dallas. Darius Geis following suit to the Lions at number 20. And Christian Kirk, we saw him at his pro day with Johnny Manziel, number 22. He looks to land in the Rockies. Number 25, Charlie Billy Price. You think the Titans are going to make this selection? Well, I'll tell you what, they have a weakness on the inside three in their offensive line, so this guy certainly would upgrade him, I think, in my opinion. The guy's a two-position guy. He can play center and he can play guard. I like him best at center. Things I like about him, I like this guy's strength. This guy has the ability to anchor down in the pass protection. He can 
punch, he bends his knees well, and he can shuffle. So I like him in pass protection. As a run blocker, I like his upper body strength, but I especially like the way he pulls. I've seen this guy pull to the outside, block linebackers, pull on traps, pull and hook the outside linebacker defensive end. Love this guy. Mm, we told you early in the program about the SEC representation from 17 through 24, 25 through 32, picking up where they left off. Florida, South Carolina, Alabama, and Georgia, all represented by Taven Bryan, Hayden Hurst, Rashad Evans, and Sonny Michelle. DJ and Bucky, what do you got? I love what Charlie did here. And Charlie, I want to hit you up on a couple spots here. Let's start with number 29, the Jags. I love this fit with DJ Moore. Why DJ Moore to the Jaguars? Well, I'll tell you what, I don't really think they have a number one receiver. I'm not sure they have a number two receiver when you look at it. And it really showed up in the, in the end of the season when people defended them. So what you got to do is open it up. Moore, to me, is more of a number two receiver. But guess what? He's better than any receiver on their roster, I think. You know, I really like this pick because when you're looking at the Jaguars, if you're going to make the commitment to Blake Borders, you got to continue to surround him with talent. DJ Moore is an outstanding route runner. He's smooth and fluid, does a great job of winning those 50 50 balls. Now you have a young core with DD Westbrook and Jadon Mickens and some of the other guys that are mixing in. You bring in Dante Moncrief, you got enough weapons to go and win now. I like because his toughness fits the culture there. Now, the other thing that stood out to me, Charlie, you are all about some trades in these mock drafts. And this one was fascinating because the Browns, you have them moving up with, I guess, one of their early second round picks to get the last pick in the first round. Why? Football reason is this. I, I think uh, he, I think he's a first round player, number one. Number two, I think that Philly will want to trade out. I think this will definitely help their offense, getting, uh, getting him in there. And that's what you got. So, by the way, this guy, I think, when I'm looking at him in comparisons, I'm looking at Kamara with the Saints. I think this guy can do what Kamara did with the Saints because they haven't asked him to do it at Georgia. They didn't ask Kamara to be a receiver at Tennessee. I think this guy can do it. Yeah, he's a great player. I think maybe it's that pick 35, Charlie. They use that pick. Then they still hold the first pick in the second round, which they could always trade back. That's always a hot commodity uh, once you get to that portion of day two after all those personnel departments have had a night to think about who's still there.